Hello everyone, welcome back to the Kukuli Bushcraft channel. Okay, just going to take you for a bit of a walk today and I'm going to try and find some wild edible plants. I'm going to introduce you to a few common species. So, here it goes. Lots of dandelions. You wouldn't want to eat these for one thing, they're right next to the road. And for another thing, they're much better as if you can pick the leaves before they flower and also as if you can find leaves where they're growing in the shade uh, you want to be looking for large leaves in the shade those ones will taste quite significantly less bitter quite nice fried in butter or with a salad both lime and beech leaves are edible this time of year they're good for bulking out salads with uh, stronger tasting greens in uh, later in the year, they're going to contain more tannins and they're going to become inedible or at least very unpleasant. Over here, in the same hedge, we've got hawthorn. Can you make that out? So we call this bread and cheese. The leaves and the flower buds. You can also use the berries. You can make a form of ketchup with it. It's uh, very medicinal, very good for your heart, and it grows everywhere. Hey. This is ground elder. It was introduced into the country as a food source, but now it's a rampant weed. You don't want this in your garden. You see the leaves look a bit like elder, also, apart from the shape of the leaves, it reminds me a little bit of dog's mercury. So you should maybe look that one up because it's poisonous. But this, it's nice in an omelette. It's, uh, it's a lot like spinach, really. Quite a nice easy one. And if you've got it in your garden, you've got a plentiful supply of food. Before you actually eat anything, do some of your own research. Look it up in a book and find out anything that looks remotely similar that might be poisonous. For example, hogweed. Compare that to giant's hogweed. It'd be an obvious example. Uh, yeah, so foraged wild greens can be very, very healthy, uh, but they can also be extremely unhealthy if you get the wrong ones. This ground elder is not plentiful much, is it? But down here, what we've got is common hogweed. So both this and ground elder are umbellifers. So that's members of the carrot family, uh, which is a family you've got to be very careful with. Uh, hogweed's big brother, the giant hogweed, which grows up to four meters high, uh, is very toxic in that it's it irritates your skin and the sap, particularly with uh, contact with with the light, which this does as well to a much lesser extent. But this is edible and good. Uh, you want to make sure that the stem is hairy, but not too hairy. Uh, no red dots. Uh, also, if you come across something like this that's totally not hairy and got purple blotches all over it, yeah, avoid that. That's hemlock. Uh, which has different leaves as well but yeah be careful with this one look up hogweed look up giant hogweed uh, in particular be careful next to a river giant hogweed likes rivers the young stems fried up in butter really quite nice when it gets mowed somewhere like this it'll quite often grow back nice and fresh late on in the year when everything else is all old and tough and woody. Here you can see the hogweed stems from last year and there's quite a lot of new fresh spring growth. Okay a couple more little rules apart from not poisoning yourself you also don't want to overpick any area. Make sure that there's some of the plant left to, to reproduce and yeah, don't decimate the same the same spot year after year because it won't last too many years. Also, I wouldn't pick anything 
anywhere where it looks like a dog's likely to pee. So next to paths, anything at pee height, yeah, best giving giving that a wide berth. Uh, also, anywhere that's likely to be sprayed with herbicides, uh, as if you see a plant that looks a little bit ill, it's probably worth avoiding, even as if it's not sprayed with anything. The blue flowers is green alkanet, and very much in danger of getting peed on, I reckon, that one. But yeah, that's another one that you can treat just like spinach. A lot of it's just spinach. I hope you like spinach. <laughs> yeah, green alkanet tends to have white spots on the leaves, which you can see a lot clearer on this individual. This one's comfrey. So, very, very easy to confuse with foxglove. So, as if you're a beginner, I wouldn't eat this one unless it's in flower. If it's in flower, then it's quite clear whether it's a foxglove or not. But it's, uh, yeah, quite nice fried in butter. Also, a very important medicinal herb. Uh, his old country name was Knit Bone. It's good for any kind of bruising or broken bones or any nasty knocks. Jack by the hedge or garlic mustard. Let's have a look at one of the leaves. Yeah, so you can cut with this one. It smells very strongly. And uh, obviously next to the road again. I wouldn't pick these ones. I personally don't like this very much. You can use it for making pesto, things like that. But to be honest, compared to Ramsen's wood garlic, yeah, I don't really rate it. This is Ramsen's wood garlic. This I think is about as good as it gets. This is really nice stuff. You can make lovely pesto out of this. You can pickle the flower buds or you can just have it in a, a very, very strong salad, which is one of my favourite options. Absolutely lovely stuff. And look how much of it we've got here. This is my favourite thing to do with wild garlic. Slice of ham. I also like to do this with the addition of whole grain mustard. That way it tastes really, really super strong. And just roll it up like that. That's good. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of my favourite plants here. Not because it's edible, it's actually poisonous. Which is why I'm mentioning it. Uh, this is one of the most common plants that people make themselves ill with. Uh, I think because of the shape of the leaf, they get it confused with sorrel. I've also heard of people picking this along with, uh, along with wild garlic. Uh, as if you see that border along the edge of the leaf on the veins that's quite a good way of recognizing this plant this is lords and ladies also it's got that V shape at the back and these amazing flowers that's not opened up yet but when it's flowered you get a load of berries all up the side of the stalk according to folklore that's where adders uh, uh, native viper that's where they get their poison from I think that might not be true but it's a nice little story and a, yeah a very nice plant very attractive flower when it opens thanks for joining me on my walk today I hope you've learned something I hope you've enjoyed the video feel free to like subscribe as if you haven't done already and I'll see you next time bye for now